Denver Broncos, Mile High View, no commercials, no bullshit. Uh, so we're putting a video together right now uh, uh, to discuss the um, film on Miami and the Denver Broncos. And uh, But before I get into that film study, I do want to uh, stress the importance, and I will leave the links uh, to look at the game film that I put together. Um, you don't have to agree with me. That's not the point. But you really should take a look at uh, game film because we have sports talk radio. We have other mile high, uh, um, excuse me, Bronco platforms who talk a great deal about film footage, never show you anything. So uh, I think that, you know, I put a lot of hard work to, believe it or not, it may not seem like it, but it is a lot of work to put all that footage together. Um, So I highly recommend that anybody uh, coming and, and viewing this should go and watch the, fo- the footage. Again, look at what's going on so that when you're getting into ridiculous conversations about bringing in Dak Prescott, you'll realize that it's just a waste of time. That discussion is a waste of time because there's so much more going on <clears throat> than just the fact of getting the fact that a, what a quarterback can or can't do. Uh, we need to get in broader discussions about, you know, uh, the team and as a whole, both offensive, defense, and special teams, where the breakdowns are, why they keep occurring. You know, this has been going on for years now. Um, so uh, uh, this film or this uh, video is also in the discussion of the the preparation for Miami. Uh, Colby, he has all 22 film on Miami. Uh, and, you know, we're going to discuss what we've seen already on film by the Broncos, which I put out there. Uh, for you to look at and how that translates to what Miami's doing. <clears throat> There's one other thing I want to discuss really quick, just put out here. <clears throat> and that is um, uh, Sports Talk Radio, uh, Sandy Clough and Orlando Franklin got into uh, this discussion and, you know, making fun of Banjo because he forgot Reisner's name or how to pronounce Reisner's name. And what they failed to to discuss, and we've brought this up so many times on this and trying to bring it out in the light, is that the fact that Fangio doesn't know the starting offensive line players only solidifies what we've been saying, that this whole arrangement was set up that Fangio would strictly be concentrating on the defense. And this is all coming from Elway, that don't worry about that, uh, that head coaching stuff. I'll take care of that. We have head coach Elway, okay? And he's going to help the, bring in the offense. And, and that's how the whole uh, Scandarello situation and Shermer uh, evolution has occurred. We tried to explain that to you. Obviously, if the head coach doesn't even know the starting, uh, the starting uh, offensive lineman's name, there's off, obviously a, a, a disconnect there and responsibilities with the offense. But we all knew that. Uh, he is strictly a defensive coordinator you know, with the title only of head coach. So with that, um, what would you like to say, uh, Colby? Um, so I want to uh, bounce off of what you said about uh, Sports Talk Radio and the whole Reisner situation. Um, we, well, you have uh, been bringing this to light for about a year, uh, two years now since he's been the head coach, right? A year and a half so far. And, uh, I think that uh, people have to understand that Vic Fangio was brought here like Wade Phillips was. Um, He's basically Wade Phillips. Yeah, or uh, Vance Joseph. Or Vance Joseph. Um, He is uh, strictly defense. We could probably put John Fox in that considerate in that uh, limelight, too. He was a defensive coach. Yeah, maybe so. so, Yeah. Yeah. um, So uh, we have to take a step back and realize, like, you know, Vic Fangio, he's not the problem here. Um, we all know who the head coach of the Denver Broncos is, and that's John Elway. Um, the offense coordinator is Pat Shermer and John Elway. And uh, we have to realize that Vic Fangio's hands are tied here. Um, you can't, if you're going to get on a coach for not knowing a player's name, like, that's just uh, immature and stupid on your part because uh, he was brought in for one reason and one reason only. To focus on the defense, and uh, what do you expect from a guy who's who has been told from the higher up, John Elway, to be 
strictly responsible of what is happening on the defensive side of the football. So for that whole that whole discussion, sports talk radio is just losing credibility by the minute because they're just trying to find something that they can fire Fangio with. They want Fangio gone, and you said it. You 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 said it after this game, after the Raider game. The the head is going to start turning with the Fangio thing, and the head's going to start. The head's already starting to turn with Drew Locke. So he he was right on everything. He was a hundred percent dead on. We called it. We called it after the Raider game that this is what's going to happen. They're going to start the Fangio fire discussion, and you see the nitpicking that they're starting to do now. So yeah, now. Um... What about, uh, they want to change gears here a second. Um, there was a guy on the p- practice squad. This was brought up by one of the online Bronco channels. Um, what th- they have a, um, uh, I guess he took off and they were saying, why didn't they play him? Nigel Bradham, linebacker. Okay. So we're going to get, I guess this stays in the realm of Fangio. Uh, so t- can you give me a little bit of insight on, on that? So Nigel Bradham, he uh, came over from Philadelphia uh, a few weeks ago. I think it was about a month and a half or a month and a half ago. He was inside linebacker, um, and uh, the thought was because can't forget about Mark Barron because he was brought in to be a coverage linebacker, another John Elway move um, that ultimately failed. So you have to bring in another linebacker on the practice squad, and they brought in Nigel Bradham, and he is an aging veteran. I don't think that was a Vic Fangio move. I don't. I don't. I think that was a full-on John Elway move. And he left because he wanted to focus on his uh, personal uh, personal family and personal thing, stuff like that. And uh, if he was on any other uh, stable organization, and the insight was is that he, he told it, he went to Elway, and he went to the guys and said, I- I'm done. I'm leaving. I want to go focus on my family. I want to go fo- focus on my personal goals. So... Um, when you take a step back and you do more research on it, if he was with the Kansas City Chiefs or the Baltimore Ravens, Seahawks, et cetera, et cetera, do you think this would have happened? Uh, well, I, well, I think that uh, they would have had a, um, a better idea how they were going to use aging veterans coming in. Uh, yeah, I think that uh, if they needed somebody like that, they would have plugged him in. Uh, they typically don't keep aging veterans too often on a practice squad, if I'm not mistaken. I think they may have done that with Reddick, Reddick, Theo Reddick last year. They're doing it with Mark Barron. But I'm not 100% sure that's if they he, they did put him on there than Mark Barron. But, uh, yeah, I would say that it most likely is another one. Well, that's what who I think is in charge of free agents is Elway. Yep. I think he's strictly in, involved in free agent. He wants to be the free agent guru. Draft decisions. Yeah, and draft decisions, buying the groceries, as people like to say. Yep. And then you're stuck with it, and you got to give, you know, if anything on the video that I showed, the, the second half of the game uh, video, uh, that it was the defense, Fangio's defense, that really kept him in the game. Uh, although, I, I'll say this, uh, there was a, a drop pass by the Raiders that could have yep. resulted into a touch. And also, their special team screwed something up. So, you correctly said, um, you did, correctly said that the game would most likely be a blowout. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was coming from you. Mm-hmm. And uh, this game easily could have been like 40, 44, I think, because they had, what, 37? Yep. So, they could have eased, just on the uh, special teams goof up alone. Had that not happened, this game could have easily went forty-four to six or whatever it was. Yeah. At the end. Um, you correctly said it would be a blowout, based off of what we're seeing on game film, which I'm producing. I don't think anybody's actually putting out game film that way. And you know, yeah, granted, I don't have the ability to draw up and and do all. I don't have that ability. But what I'm trying to get across is I want you to see this play over and over and over and over, so you get under an understanding of what it is you're seeing. If you want to disagree with me, I'm saying this to the people out there, I'm, I'm totally fine with that. But we need to get in these discussions. You know, I had somebody on the comment that just wanted to get into, oh, Drew Lock, he's got to go. And I said, well, you know, take a look at this video. I said, we have too many other problems. And he's like, yeah, you know. yeah. And so I think what happens is, is that 
we, and I really think that Bronco fans, for instance, have seen poor offensive scheming, offensive line. Uh, we've seen free runners for many, many years, yep. uh, poor, t- poor blocking for many, many years. And now Bronco fans just think that's normal. They've been, they've been desensitized to the point where they think quarterbacks are going to solve this, this issue. Oh, you make quarterbacks make the offensive line better. Well, that that's when they're already functional. They got to at least be functional before your quarterback can make them better. You, you know what I'm saying? Can I can I bring up a point about that? Um, yes. Uh, was it Jay Cutler's rookie year or was his second year where he had a really good year in Denver? And it was because of the offensive Maybe line. The second, it may have been the second. Second year, he, he had that really good uh, second year. Um, he had a really good offensive line in front of him. I mean, so to say that Patrick Mahomes, okay, so the likes of Russell Wilson and Patrick Mahomes, just to bring examples, are – the main reason why these uh, these offenses go, you must be out of your mind because if they were continuing to get beat the crap like Drew Locke is, uh, do you think they would uh, be able to put up 40 points a game or 50 points a game? No. So I don't want to hear from the fans. And you know what? I'm not going to get into that because, you know, it's all Drew Locke's fault and they're right. And I can't, there's really nothing we can do about it. All we can do is keep bringing you guys film that we see from, uh, standpoint where we take a step back and we don't put out bullshit on your, like you said, on your front door. We don't put bullshit on your front door, okay? He doesn't. So we're not going to sit here and be sports talk radio and tell you that we need to go out and get Dak Prescott and pay him a hundred some million dollars, okay? So that I, well, uh, barring you'd even want to come here because it didn't. He just get uh, basically destroyed from a similar situation, exact similar situation. Dysfunctional offense, yeah. I and mean, I'll say something about Jason Garrett. Is that, you know, you know, I understand that vanilla is definitely his his variety of offense. But the the one thing he did know how to do was put an offensive line together. And when Dak Prescott had the actual functioning offensive line, he was able to actually do something. Okay, exactly. And this yeah. also happens to with Brees too. That you know, a few years ago they were going to, uh, they were trying to drum Drew Brees out of town because he wasn't he was underperforming and. Yeah. For the same reason, the, the offensive line was not getting, you know, he can't, fun. it's like, okay, he's such a good carpenter, we'll give him a rock to, to hammer with, we'll give him a, a string to cut with, you know, it's just, it's, it's stupid talk. Well, okay. it, it's, sorry, it's, it's the same exact situation what happened in Kansas City. They built the offensive line around Alex Smith, and yeah. they, they, put, they uh, uh, implemented Patrick Mahomes, that's why he's had this so all the success. Oh, well, he has, he's had injuries on the offensive line, but they, the player personnel is a, is far beyond what the Denver Broncos have as offensive linemen. I mean, you can, you, <laughs> that, that's all I have to say about that. Well, I got something you may disagree with. You'll probably not like what I'm going to about to say is that okay. next, next year, I would be willing to, to entertain the, the Blake Bortles show. Okay. I would be in, uh, all for entertaining the Blake Bortles show if, and only if, it means you're not going to give everything up to get Fields, you know, to get another quarterback. Or and there's no way you could bring somebody like Matt Ryan because there's no, again, there's no support mechanism. And it's the same with Fields. Is what I'm the point I'm trying to say is. Yeah. I would gladly say, okay, well, we'll get into the, the the Ryan. Uh, uh, I'm trying to get all these quarterbacks in my head and lock. We'll, we'll get into this whole quarterback competition. If it means that Elway would is handcuffed and you bring in proper player personnel to start building up the team in the, in the infrastructure areas, you know, the, the, the lines, particularly blind backing. If we could focus on those areas more and less on, you know, bringing in a DAC or a, a Matt Ryan or a, a, a Stafford or, or a Fields, what, you know, whichever way you want to go with it, I would be willing to sacrifice the Drew Locke experiment just to, just to uh, keep them from, you know, themselves. Go, and go ahead. I'll, I'll ask you because, okay, I, I, that's that's interesting standpoint coming from you especially, but uh, um, I'll ask you this. Do you trust Elway to get that stuff right? Of course not. And you would you trust Elway to say, okay, I'm going to tie my hands 
and be, uh, I won't, uh, you know, I'll let you decide now, Fangio, a Shermer or whatever, you know, uh, Munchak, you decide which, which player. No, he will never do that. No. Uh, and, but here's the, uh, another caveat to this, too. If you wanted to sway me to Brittany Bolin, if you really wanted to sway me to Brittany Bolin, she, she would have to do this. She would have to get with Beth Bolin, the, the two of them together, sit down and say, we have come to one agreement. Is that Elway? You cannot be involved in player personnel decisions, or, or any the organization, or anything. It's like, yes, you can. You can do marketing. You can do PR. You can shake hands, whatever. But you you cannot. You have to let it. Give it up to the coaching staff. Same with Joe Ellis. All of them. All of you people have to stay out of this. Then I would have some respectability, but I know that's not going to happen. No. So that's why I have no respect for those people. So, you know, what needs to be done is they all need to get together and make a decision about, you know, this trust. Okay, just getting them out of player personnel decision. You don't hear this anywhere, do you? This is the only channel you would possibly... No, no, no because nobody likes to talk about it because they're, uh, they're so focused on the next great quarterback in Denver and they're so focused on the next great head coach in Denver. Yeah, they can fire later on, you know. And Barry. Barry. Yeah, we got a whole cemetery back there full of those people. Oh yeah, that, that's the solution. That's how that's how losing organization and losers think all the time. You know, mm-hmm. you know, it's just you know, let's just keep doing the same thing that hasn't been working. You now, know, now bringing back to the Nigel Bradham situation, I think that he realized that this organization's trash. I think that's the main reason he left. He he's like, they're not utilizing me to my ability. Number one, number two, um. You guys used to be a great organization, and I come, I came from Philadelphia where I have won a Super Bowl, and you know they're a lot more stable than you guys are here. So I'm out of here, and I think it was a big f you to LA because, uh, but but nobody will bring that up. You only hear you will only hear it from this channel. Yep, yep. You'll get your balls cut off if you talk about that stuff. So yeah, and you yep, and locked out of the building, and locked out of the building. That's why Sandy Clef and Orlando Franklin have started to turn. Oh yeah, they're definitely uh, doing everything to protect Elway right now. Oh yeah, <clears throat> because they know that Sandy, Sandy Clough, out of all the people, actually you know took jabs at Elway, but now he had to take a step back because oh, I'm going to get locked out of the building and the producers are going to cut my balls off. Yeah, but, well, the war drums are pounding. You know, I made a video and I just put an ultimatum out there, and that got a lot of attention. You know, that one did. So obviously the. The, the war drums are being beat out there, and, and it's just going to get worse as this keeps going on. Oh, yeah. And, you know, uh, it, it's just like I understand they all want a, you know, a redo for next year. But there's, you know, I, what, what we're seeing on the film, it just, it, it, there's a lot that just doesn't compute. Um, the film really doesn't lie. Doesn't, you know, the film doesn't lie. I mean, how many team meetings in the backfield, whether the running backs there or they're, or they're after the quarterback, how many team defensive team meetings in our offense's backfield do you need before you realize that, you know, maybe we do have a problem. And this has been going on for a while. I mean, years. This has been going on since the last year of Peyton Manning. And Peyton Manning held it together as long as he could. Yeah. Maybe Gary Kubiak to some extent. And it just, it, it, it just all unraveled. Rich Gangarilla to some point. A little so, bit. Well, that was, in my opinion, that was an accident. He wasn't, you know, and they couldn't get anybody. And it seemed to me they were begging, if I remember right, they were really hounding uh, Kyle Shanahan to release him, you know, to let him go because I don't think anybody wanted to come here. And I think that's why they want to fire Fangio because they know, you know, that there's only one person to blame. And this is the same outfit that said they were going to hold Elway accountable. If. Yep. If Fangio ends up getting fired, ultimately Elway's got to be held accountable. And I just asked Sports Talk Radio, any of you people in Sports Talk Radio, you tell me, do you trust that John Elway's going to get it right if he if he couldn't get it right with Fangio? And also, why is it that you know all these coaches just seem to do better when they leave here? Why does it seem that players do better than when when they leave here? Why is this a repeating pattern? That's my okay. question to them. Then my question is: Look at Vance Joseph's track record in uh, Arizona. Yeah, look at he's he's reinvented himself in Arizona. Yeah, you know the defense is probably not a top five defense, but they're they're the trending. Top, they're trending there. They're trending, but yeah. arrows pointing upward. We're putting that we're pointing down that way. So I mean, seriously, 
sports talk radio, like you said, you know, you're going to sit here and continue to put the clown bullshit out, you know? And, and so like, this is why the whole Blake Bortles thing and you predicted it, you predicted it. It's going to be a quarterback competi- competition in the off season. It's going to be Drew Locke, Blake Bortles or whoever they bring in. I don't know who's going to want to come here unless they trade for Jimmy Garoppolo in that contract or Matt Ryan in that contract. Oh God. Could you imagine? <laughs> Well, yeah, you can't ask Matt Ryan to come here. He can't function. No, there's nobody that can function with this. None of them. Bortles wow. can't. A lot can't. Ryan you can't. You know, I've got footage of Ryan. I put online uh, our own uh, or Rippin. I'm sorry, Rippin. I got uh, footage of Rippin. I put online, and yeah. I got the good and bad. There isn't really that big of a, uh, except for a la- lack of arm strength when compared to to uh, Lock, but. They're struggling with the same thing, and it's going to be tenfold. You know, this ain't the Jets. You know, this is a defense that's a step up from the Jets, and you know, you're you know, you're clamoring for for ripping, and oh. I did, and I have the footage out there. I showed the good rip and the bad rip, and and it's it, it isn't that far off uh, at all from Locke and what he's having to deal with and what he's doing. So you looked at the Miami uh, footage. So let's let's talk about Miami right now and what they're bringing to. <laughs> This this clown show of an offense. Okay, so uh, the defense for the Miami Dolphins is a top five defense. I'm sorry to admit it, Broncos country, but this is a top five defense. This Not a Maryland top oh, five. Oh, uh, yeah, Th- no. So this is this is a level defense where they produce turnovers and they will hit you in the mouth. And Brian Flores, you know, comes from the Bill Belichick tree. You know, a lot of people don't do well when they do it when they become head coaches off the Bill Belichick tree. But Brian Flores looks like he understands what his role is in Miami, and he understands how to get these players behind him, and he's a defensive-minded coach. And L.A. was interviewing him before they uh, hired Fangio, so that's something to take a note. And guess what? Let me guess. He didn't sign up with this here. Nope. He would rather he would rather trade for a bunch of first-round picks and start – at the bottom, then come to Denver and say, we just need to retool. So, um, that, that, that's, that's something they won't talk about either, will they? Nope, they won't talk about that either. But uh, the Dolphins' defense, they have two of the best corners in football, and Xavier Howard and Byron Jones. Uh, they have a really good defensive line. Uh, Emmanuel, Emmanuel Ogba is a guy that you need to look at. He's going to probably be on the right side of the offensive line. He is a game-wrecking machine. Uh, Emmanuel Ogba has been a, a revelation. You know what I think is don't put anybody in the backfield to pick up a block. Did you finally see they finally got – because we kept pounding the table. Show us the footage of – or he's finally blocking, and now you know he why. He gets knocked on his ass. Every so. single time, yeah. He's knocked out. Yeah. He has to charge the offensive line. I've never seen that before, you know, in, in blocking schematics. But, uh, yeah, they don't have him sitting back. You notice that, right? Yes. Yeah, they have. See? Go ahead. No, I'm just, I'll have you. But you saw, yeah, because I didn't even bring it up. He just gets blown up, you know. And then. For the, the Dolphins' defensive line, they have Christian Wilkins, who's a first-round pick from last year, who's a who's a damn good uh, player. He, he's not a great player, but he's a damn good player. Um, they also have uh, Shaq Lawson they brought in, and they have Kyle Van Noy. So they have some players on that defense. Um, that defense is a top-five defense, like I said, and uh, this isn't going to be the Raiders' defense. This isn't going to be the Falcons' defense. This isn't even going to be the Patriots' defense here, ladies and gentlemen. This is a top five defense that will probably. I'd be I'd be surprised if we get fourteen points in this game. Seriously, <laughs> it, it is that bad. It is that bad because I. I well, watched, they couldn't get. They couldn't get. I don't know if they got fourteen points with uh, the Raiders defense, they did they? Didn't, but this is this is a this is a notch above that Raiders defense. So we're going above. back into the Tampa Tampa slash Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. It's it, but the, the the difference between those two teams is that the Dolphins produce turnovers. So whoever is going to be the quarterback, they need to make smart decisions. I I just got done before I came on here. Just uh, just a side note, uh, they were talking about uh, Drew Lock, the final injury report. Uh, Drew, uh, Vic, Vic Fangio sounded confident, you know, of him playing this Sunday. So just just an FYI, I watched. He sounded confident. I don't know if that means anything, 
but he sounded pretty confident. Um, he wasn't hesitating on his answer. Well, he pretty, pretty well, sure. Drew Lock can start, but does that mean he's even going to finish? Are they going to get him killed before this game's over? I with mean, Lou? I would love to see him play because I want those reps to go to him because he needs those reps. But, but is he going to get killed? Probably. I mean, and this is this is my prediction. I mean, but, but, but at the end of the day, wouldn't that prove a point how bad this offense is? Wouldn't people just realize that this offense the line sucks? I mean, oh, wouldn't whole, that just prove a point? The line sucks and the schematic sucks. I mean, it's like a double whammy. I mean, Orlando Franklin can can sit there and talk about a technique and stuff like this, but I can see, and I put the film out there for everybody to see that it's beyond just technique. I'm not saying he's wrong. I'm just saying, but it's way beyond just technique. I mean, you don't have you have a technique problem with a player, you know. Then you have maybe another defensive player coming in. But when you have team meetings, whole team meetings going on in your backfield by the defense. You've got serious problems all the way around beyond just techniques. You got serious coaching problems too. Well, you got that, that's the problem. Everybody was on the Mike Munchek bandwagon. You know, I mean, I wasn't. You know, was I? Yeah, because I I thought Mike Munchek was a great offensive line coach. We finally got possibly the next Alex Gibbs. Well, but that but, but I, I had to sit back. Much. But I had to sit back and realize that I didn't trust Elway to get the right personnel for. Like Pat Bullen did with Alex Gibbs, I didn't trust that with Elway for Munchak at all. Well, maybe we're going about this all wrong. Maybe they are getting the right personnel, but when they come to the Broncos, Elway's so dysfunctional here that he's running this so dysfunctionally that they just self destruct. Well, I, I I have to disagree with that because uh, I I see him go out and get players, and they're just absolute trash. I mean, when you're going well, out to sign Juwan yeah, that's James, part of it. <clears throat> that's part of it. Juwan James and Graham Glasgow. I mean, seriously, you sit back and take a step back and then like, okay, well, what what would Mike Munchak do in a situation like this? Would he draft players or would he go after players that he knows how to coach up? Especially he can go back to his roots in Pittsburgh and Tennessee and maybe find some players that are young, up-and-coming players. Instead yeah, of 27, 28-year-olds yeah. who... They're, okay, I have to ask people this. Offensive line players, especially really good offensive line players, don't just hit free agency. There, there's a reason why they're out there. Either one, their technique sucks, or they just they're not they they move on because one they're getting old, or two they would rather prioritize. For instance, like Detroit, they'd rather prioritize Frank Ragnow, Frank Frank Ragnow, the center who is leaps and bounds above Graham Glasgow. And Dewan James, look how good look how good Miami is now without that trash hot tub time machine. So. It's just a reoccurring thing with Elway. But going back to the Dolphins tape, the offense of uh, for the Dolphins, Tua Tagovailoa is uh, he's very accurate with the football. Number one, number two, um, he he reads the whole field, so he he's gonna be like your Derek Carr, kind of, not like your Derek Carr. I'd probably say like a Matt Ryan, but. He's still a young player. He still has a lot of work on, but that's one of the things that came coming out of Alabama. He uh, he uh, was really good at. And number three, what I love about the Dolphins coaching staff, and this is what I really wanted Pat Sherman to do with Drew Locke, they are uh, utilizing the strengths of Tua Tagovailoa, and that's something that they're they are not they they are protecting him in some ways, but they're also utilizing those strengths in certain plays and play packages where you have, you see Pat Schirmer and he's force feeding stuff down our throat that Drew Locke is not comfortable doing. They are making life easy for Tua Tagovailoa, a guy that people need to watch out for. And uh, we've been struggling. I've been saying for years that we don't have a coverage linebacker. There's actually two players, Mike Gusecki and uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Grant Jr. Jeremy Grant is a slot receiver. He is he is a he's a fast receiver. He is basically like your he's he's the level of Henry Ruggs. He's that fast. Probably not that speed. Probably a notch down. And then you have Mike Gusecki, who is a pretty damn good uh, tight end. So those are guys you need to watch out for. And their offensive line is a lot better than people give it credit for. They they drafted a bunch of offensive linemen. And uh, they said, we're building this offensive line through the draft. We're going to get young, up-and-coming players that know how to play football. And I love what the Dolphins have been doing with their team. Well, that's what I asked uh, uh, with uh, the Broncos to do with uh, Coughlin and whatnot. Uh, but they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. They got Glasgow. 
you know, it's. I I don't know if you've watched any Dolphins plays this year, Dolphins film, but what, what I have, have you seen? I have not because okay. I was so wrapped up in going over our own film or that train wreck. Yeah, it's it's painful. Yeah. So I had yeah, that's why I'm relying on you. You've done a good job with uh, with, but, with checking it out. But but I don't I don't think that uh, I think this game is. Um, well, my prediction for this game is. Uh, <laughs> I think it's going to be the same old thing. Well, I think, well I think, yeah, but this is how it plays out: is that they're going to be overly cautious with Miami's defense. Uh, the, the obviously they're, they're they will never stop the free runners. Nope. So, it'll probably be a lot of checkdowns. Uh, you'll see a lot of, ch- a lot of checkdowns. Uh, they probably do not want to go deep very often, especially maybe with um, the condition. It uh, and they'll probably try to run the football. How's the Miami's run stop ability? As they're, a deep they're pretty damn good. I mean, Christian Wilk- Christian Wilkins is a run- he. He's basically. Uh, I, I compare him a lot to Terrence Knighton, but he's a run stuffer. Um, he's not as big as Terrence Knighton, but he has that uh, slippery slippery ability that Terrence Knighton had when he was in Denver. Um, and then they also have another guy. I can't I can't say the name. It's a very long name, but uh, they have two really good defensive linemen that can stop the run, and they have Randy McMillan and uh, Baker, I believe, who are very good middle linebackers for this team. And they got Kyle Van Noy over, who's a damn good player who fits the Brian Flores. Uh, Patriots defense, but the thing that they do is they play a lot of cover zero, and they they're gonna do they're gonna probably do what the the Raiders and the Falcons do. They're gonna play cover zero, and they're gonna dare us to throw the football because they know that we're just gonna try and run the football, and we can't run the football. And what you said is very interesting about the checkdowns and being cautious. I think they're gonna. I think the offense for Pat Sherman is gonna kind of be like what we saw against the first half in uh, the Chargers. I think that's yeah. what you're gonna yeah. see. Yes, yes, exactly. So we predicted that, and uh, do you predict that uh, any team meetings, uh, any Dolphin team meetings in the Broncos' offensive backfield, any team meetings going on there by yes. the Miami Dolphins? Yes. They'll have team meetings yes. back. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, he, I mean, Demar Dotson. I, I loved. I like Demar Dotson. I I think he played well when he was in, but he's an aging veteran and he's injury prone, just like Jared Valdir and all these other right tackles that we've had. So do I rely on that? that Graham Cowell struggled. Lloyd Cushenberry struggled. Reisner, even Bulls. You know, the tape that I watched yesterday, Pro Bowl Garrett Bulls, huh? Pro yeah, Bowl Pro Garrett Bulls. Bulls. Just goes back, reverts back to his old ways. And, you know, everybody's saying he's a Pro Bowler. Pro Bowler, yeah. But it's not just one or two players on this offensive line. It's this whole offensive line that's struggling this year. And uh, they're going to have a feast. I mean, a Early Thanksgiving feast back there with our running backs. Or the, in the quarterback, so you're, I you're, 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 you're predicting some Miami Dolphin team meetings in the Broncos. Uh, field. Yeah. Some, <laughs> you know, some Thanksgiving feast. Early Thanksgiving I don't know how, feast. I don't know how you could say that. You, what proof do how you How dare have? you? <laughs> yeah. What proof do you possibly have? Uh, all that video I put out, you know, well, just... Well, and another thing I have to talk about with your film is uh, I don't understand how people aren't recognizing the fact that the whole okay so me and you have been pounding the table for uh, Melvin Gordon to pass block and then you finally witness it and he gets knocked <laughs> on his ass and I'm, you're I'm telling me that you. he's a better yeah. running back than Philip Lindsay I mean when he when he gets four carries and you barely see him on the field. Who who does that ultimately fall on? <laughs> Elway. You know Elway. what? I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you. As much as a uh, little fanfare that, um, oh, what's our what's our third running back there? Um, who's that? What? Royce name? Freeman. Freeman. Yeah, the name escaped me because I never see him. So, um, doesn't he block at least better than Gordon? I mean, yeah. So why I would think so? If you're, if, he's better than Gordon. Yeah. So why are why are you putting in someone that you know can't block? Oh, wait a minute. You're trying to show me, me, this guy out here that's calling you out, Mr. Elway. 
that Gordon can actually block, but now we see that he can't block. My grandmother can block better than him. You've just proven that to us, but you won't put the guys who can block in there. So ultimately, yes, who, that's why I say, when, when I say Shermer, and, or not so much Shermer, but Munchak, Fangio, their self-destruction or their destruction, self-destruction, it's all Elway-centric. Because once they leave here, Munchak will do fine. Fangio will do fine. I don't. I mean, Schumer probably won't even get a job again. But uh, he's going to be the Mike McCoy again. Yeah, like Mike McCoy. Yeah, maybe a brief and then out. You know, interlude. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> so again, I'm predicting, uh, like you said, the San Diego. They all totally so conservative. Don't give it up, especially if if Rippin is in there. It'll definitely get really conservative. And I, you know, I like how these these optimistic Bronco fans of. Well, you know, I know Rippin is so much better than, you know, are you really seeing that? I've got footage, and you can go and check my website can, of can the I, Jets can game. I, did, I broke down film of the Jets game, and I show Rippin, good, bad, and indifferent. And can there's I, no, I, no step up. Can, can I say something about that whole Rippin bandwagon thing? Yeah. Um, that whole Rippin bandwagon thing, everybody's just doing it because uh, I. it's just really frustrating to me how people have to uh, – Okay, I'm not saying Rippin's a terrible quarterback. I think he could be a long-term backup quarterback in this league. I think that he has the potential to be that. But am I saying that I want him over Drew Locke? Hell no. Because Drew Locke has more talent than Rippin. I mean, seriously, when you when you put on the tape, seriously, when you put on the tape, when you put on the Jets tape, particularly, what happened late in that game? What we, happened late? We almost lost to the Jets with Rippin. Yeah, Nobody yeah. will bring that up. Yeah, and, but we lost. He threw three picks that were just god awful. And I'm not saying Drew Locke's any better, but I I, I, I see more potential in Locke than I do in Rippin. Out of when when we got Rippin out of Boise State, I'm like, okay, you got your future backup quarterback. Yeah, but I'm not. He's not my starting quarterback. And, and oh, but but Rippin Rippin does uh, Rippin, for instance, uh, commands this offense better. It makes this offense flow better. Uh, no, it doesn't. They played the Jets. Okay, let, let's let's see if Rippon played. Okay, if Rippon played against Pittsburgh, what would you guys be thinking now? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys well, can't there, 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 it's coming. Me. The exactly. bus is coming. The bus is coming. Well, and I, I don't. I'm predicting that Locke will get knocked out of this game. I'm uh, yeah, me too. He's going to get knocked out. Um, and uh, they're going to bring him in, and it's going to be conservative as, as all get out. But you know how long I've been putting right up. You know how long I've been putting up with this whole thing. Norris Weiss, man, we got to get Norris Weiss in there. You got to put Norris Weiss in. <laughs> I've been hearing this since then. Well, the, the problem, yeah, Kubiak's got to go in, man. Oh God. <laughs> oh God. I, I I but like the whole ripping the whole ripping thing. It's just. I, I laugh at it because people they're they're on that high for playing the Jets, and we almost lost to the Jets. So, I mean, you don't bring that up, you feel good fans. So every time you guys want to rip it in, you don't bring up how we almost lost to the New York Jets. Well, they don't uh, talk about how we played against Tampa Bay. It they wasn't don't talk about how Driscoll played against uh, Pittsburgh. Well, they well they don't yeah they don't want Driscoll. That's for sure. Uh, that's why they haven't dressed him out. Yeah. So, I mean, the fans and the team. So, and again, to me, it's another, I thought Driscoll actually did a pretty good job considering everything he was put under. Oh, well, he's more mobile than Rippin. Yeah. And he's got a better arm. He's definitely got a much better arm than Rippin. That's for sure. But, but so I think what's going to happen, I think you're dead on about Drew Locke getting knocked out of the game. They're going to rush him out there. He's going to get killed by this defensive line. Uh, they're not going to be able to pass on this defense. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. All you, all you go vertical fans want to say that we're going to go vertical. All you guys want to, you know, go vertical. It's not going to happen in this game. Number one, number two, I, uh, number three. I don't think that. Uh, I think if they bring your rip in, it's going to be the same old crap that we've been seeing with Locke. They're not going to, you know, make him feel comfortable. They're not going to help him out. And uh, I think that the defense will keep us in this game for as long as they could, and they're eventually just going to break. That's yeah. what's been happening all year. Yes, so, I can see the defense uh, keeping the, the keeping this tight. 
And, uh, well, you can, here's the other thing, too, is that Miami, the one thing I do know is that they've had short fields. Are, their special teams, isn't, aren't they on a, a completely oh, different oh, realm of existence than ours? Yes. So you because got... They have good player personnel. So you, yeah, exactly. So you have two horrible special teams, or I'm sorry, <laughs> you have a horrible special teams and you have a good, really good special teams, and that's going to make a big difference in this game, too. And I, I think this game will be, I, I think, okay, I think this game will be a lot like, I think it's going to be a lot like the first half against L.A. Chargers. I think it's going to be a lot, I think the game that it's going to be closest resembling to is the, the Tampa Bay game. I think this game is going to be an absolute blowout. I, I don't I don't see Denver winning this game, number you, one. You, you see a, an avalanche falling on this offense. You think last week was bad? Uh, this game will be over by the, th- by the start of the third quarter. Even uh, if the, the yes, third yes. Even if the score is close. Even yeah, if it'll the be score, over by the middle of the third quarter like it was with the, the chart or the Raiders. Or before. Or before. Or by half. Exactly. Yeah, or by half. We called it against the Falcons. Oh, I called it. Well, I, yeah, I think it, I think you hit him twice in a row. I think you called it with the Raiders too. I said, well, I mean, you said it was going to be a blowout. The Raiders. It could well, be a, well, well, the reason why I said it was a blowout with the Raiders because they have the offense capability to keep up with the good teams in the NFL, and they were going to put be able to put points on this Broncos defense because our player personnel on the defense side of the ball sucks, except for a few players. But uh, Banjo held them together, but at the same time. Uh, you, one bad throw by Carr, which should have been probably most likely would have been a touchdown or damn near it. That would have been a 44-point game. Yeah, well, even without that, you have that special teams gap. That would have made it a 44-point game. So in that respect, you would have got it right. I mean, their, bro- their special teams really screwed that up because the guy they, they, they blocked and got the foul, there's no reason they had to do that. That guy was never going to make a difference in the play. So that was a really boneheaded move on their on their part. Well, I, I also think what you're going to see is I think you're going to see the special team struggle again. I think it's going to struggle. Do you think for... a special team score by the by Miami? Are they yes. capable of doing that? I think they have the capability. The Raiders almost did last week a ton of red pro. Yes, yes. Yeah, again, it's a it's a really horrible special teams up against a really good special team. And I, I think I think that I don't think that the Dolphins necessarily are on the level on the offensive side of football as the Raiders, but they have the capability to put at least 30 points on this team. And the defense will be able to hold the, the, the terrible three and out, Pat Shermer offense, three wide receiver sets. And you brought up something. I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before about the three wide receiver sets while they're putting them so close to the offensive line. You brought that up, and I'm like, what the hell is that? You know, if you're going to be an offensive scheme football, if you're going to scheme the football, an offensive side, wouldn't you be spreading your receivers out instead of just keeping them together? Oh, but we're trying to confuse the defense. You're not confusing the defense. I mean, Pat Shermer, you're an idiot. I mean, well, I, I, I just call understand. better offense. High school calls better offense. Yeah, exactly. I would never, as a coordinator, if I'm at third and three. I, yeah, I, that's what I was going to bring. Yeah. Yeah, I would uh, drill it into the each receiver's head that how dare you? If I catch you on our side of the the down marker, I will personally bench you for the next two games. But you're that three, here. you're you get your ass on that other side of that marker and and you know go get open. I don't care how you do it. You get on the other side of that marker. I mean, it's a carnal sin in my in my opinion. Well, it's I would, also go ahead. Sorry, that I would draw a play up. That has on a third and three a receiver on my side of the marker. It just makes no sense whatsoever. I don't care how open he is. No, you get your ass on the other side of that on the other side of that marker. But doesn't that also prove something about Pat Schirmer that he doesn't know what he's doing? Well, I if mean, he's he, yeah, he, well, what we, he's doing we, isn't very good. Yeah. Well, he, well, he, oh, well it's a player. Oh, well, it's a player personnel that he doesn't have. Well, but, but man, dude, at least you, at least you can't. You were brought here for one reason, Pat Shermer. You were brought here for a reason. And I thought it was to put more points on the scoreboard. Then why didn't you keep Rich Gangarillo? If you were in that mindset, John L.A., 
why didn't you freaking come out with here and be like, okay, we're going to keep... That would have been the smart thing to do. Keep Rich Gangarillo. But Rich Gangarillo challenged Elway, just like Adam Peters did back then. Just well, like John Fox. Well, I think what happened with the Scandarello deal, I think that it goes back, again, I'll just stick to it. I think that to bring in um, the whole, it's what we're seeing now, but when we go back to uh, Fangio not knowing uh, his offensive lineman's name, I think the deal was set up all the way in the back that you're going to get, you know, this hot, you know, offensive coordinator. I'll take care of your defense. John Elway, I'll wear the hat of, of head coach. We just won't tell anybody that. Okay, well, let's get in. And, you know, that's the whole thing about I'll give you the defense if you give me the head coach. Okay? And that works, works great for Elway because he doesn't take the fall. <clears throat> so when he begged Rich Scandarello because nobody else would come, he needed somebody. Yep. You had to get somebody. And Kyle Shanahan wasn't going to be here. So that really probably uh, really threw him for a loop when Kyle Shanahan wasn't going to come here. So he begged. That Rich Gangarella, and then you know, uh, Fangio's like, what, what, what? Why are you giving me this guy when you promised me so much more? I have a question about that. What do you, what do you think of Bill Musgrave? Well, again, I mean, look, I, he's. If you were going to do that, then why didn't you keep Bill Musgrave? He was a he was a proven offensive coordinator. He did it in the, in the Raiders with Derek Carr. Well, why didn't you just stick with it? Him? Had to be one or the other. I would have kept Bill Musgrave. I think. Yeah, it had to be one or the other. I think Bill Musgrave wanted to get out of uh, wanted to get out of Pittsburgh mostly because of Ben Roethlisberger. Personally, that's what I think. That Ben Roethlisberger was just making it unbear- unbearable to be there, quite frankly. And um, Elway had to make a decision. He's you know either I hire Musgrave or I lose out on Fangio. He didn't want to lose out on Fangio because he needs somebody to keep the defense intact. It's the only thing he had going to his name, Elway. Elway knows that he never did anything for the offense, nothing. And Elway knew the everything on his hat hung on the defense, again, that Wade Phillips helped and, 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 and Pat Bolin, all those two. That's the only thing he could really hang his hat on to say, at least I did that, you know. So I think he absolutely wanted Fangio to come here. I could never understand why he would sign the dotted line. So yeah, I figured there had to be stipulations involved. And I think it was, look, you don't have to worry about being a head coach. Because Fangio, really, he was turning down head coaching offers. So I think Elway said, don't worry about the head coach. We'll just, you know, your head coach by name only. I'll be the head coach. You just concentrate on the defense. That's why he, he doesn't know that offensive lineman's name. Okay, that should be apparent to every. This should have been apparent to everybody a long time ago. They always running the offensive show here. I mean, we saw this with uh, um, we saw it with Vance Joseph, and that's why Sports Talk Radio said, "Okay, this is it, Elway. This is it. You, oh, this is the only thing you get." Well, typical. They're going back on their word. Yeah, they can't keep their word. They don't want to get locked out of the building, and they don't want their. Balls chopped off like Mark Schlereth, well, Sandy Clough, and Orlando Franklin. All of them. Yeah, they're they're the gatekeepers. They're hey, the Salami, in- we tell the truth on this channel. Oh, Bullshit. Yeah, we tell the truth. Well, I'm showing video. Yeah, Nobody's yeah. show, showing video. Yeah, what I mean, are you doing? It'd be great if they'd do it. I would encourage them to do it. But I'm the only one that's actually doing it. So, And I just don't understand. Those, the, those videos should get the highest oh. views, is the videos of, of the game fo- footage breakdowns. Those should get the highest. If, if fans are really fans, if they really want to know, if they're really curious and somebody took their time to break down footage, whether they're right or whether what I'm saying is right or wrong, but if they can just kind of analyze the footage I'm showing, just that'd be a start. Then we can get out of these little, you know, kid conversations about Dak Prescott. Oh, God. You know, what? so what? It's you really think? On, on, and exposing what the issues are. We were the ones that said, you know, show us. Please show us him blocking. Just show us. They didn't. Yeah, so they, they, they really featured him blocking because, remember, they, they put uh, Lindsey in there. And that yeah, just it's the Falcons. Yeah, so now you see, now you see, you know, that was getting under his skin, see? Somebody's watching this. Get him out there blocking. Well, who, I, I don't know. Maybe they're not. Maybe they because they have no choice they have to put him out there. Because you know, other than they have uh, number three running back out there who can actually block. Huh? Yeah. 
uh, I want to bring up that Melvin Gordon. Okay, so when that Melvin Gordon signing went down, number one, I thought it was a, the dumbest move Elway could have made because you had a similar type player in Royce Freeman. And then Philip Lindsay is way better than Melvin Gordon. I mean, oh, I think Royce Phillip, Freeman's better than Melvin Gordon. Oh, that's what, But I think Philip Lindsay is 10 times better than both of those because he has – okay. This is the most underrated aspect of Philip Lindsay, okay? And every time I watch film, it happens every time. He sets up his blockers. I he is he 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 runs like Christian McCaffrey does. He sets up his blockers. He's he's patient with the blocking. He's not just running up the middle, b- bumping into some offensive lineman's back. He's setting up his blockers. What do people? And he's very patient with running the football. We, okay. He's very patient with running the football. What I mean by that is he he runs like Le'Veon Bell, the likes of Le'Veon Bell. He runs – he's very patient with it. He, he, so when he's running like a zone scheme, whatever, if, if they're pulling a guard, he will wait for that. He will slow down a little bit, wait for that guard, and he'll hit the hole fast. That's, that's how you do the zone running scheme. That's how Terrell Davis did it. That's how Justin Forsett in Baltimore with Gary Kubiak during that year. That's how he did it too. That's how Terrell Davis did it back in the 90s. He set up his blockers, but he had a great offensive line in front of him to begin with. But that being said, he that's how they did it back in the 90s, the Broncos. They did a zone running scheme. That's how Terrell Davis had all that success because he set up his freaking blockers. But you know, you know what Philip Lindsay represents to Elway, don't you? That he got it wrong. Every that's time he, he had success. That's why, he didn't, that's why they didn't draft him like they said they would. Yeah. He got it wrong. Every time Bill Lindsay does well, it's a reminder that Elway got it wrong. So that's what... He'll go somewhere and flourish. No, he will go somewhere and flourish, yeah. I mean, I can't imagine him staying here. And I I know know Elway Elway won't pay him. You'll get stuck with Gordon. So, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that's the foregone conclusion. But that's that's the problem I have to... That's the problem I have with... uh, Sports STR, and I, I don't really get frustrated. That I just find it humorous, and I, I always tell you what they say, and it's the feel-good fans. But it's just really frustrating. How do you sit there and just just praise Elway for these free agent signings, especially? And the draft decision. Has his – okay, I'm going to ask you something. Has his drafts been all that? And okay, since the past two years, two and a half years, has his drafts been all that? No. I mean, you have the likes of Cortland Sutton, Bradley Chubb, and, uh, okay, I would probably say Noah Fant, Dalton Reisner. I, I, I give Dalton Reisner the benefit of the doubt because it's the second year, and guards take usually three years to produce. So I'm going to give Reisner one more year. He's a young player. But those, okay, let's say for those, maybe Drew Locke, if Drew Locke, if they don't kill him, but they, they killed him. Out of those five guys, you have this other players here, these other players here that just absolutely suck. The likes of Royce Freeman, you guys were hyping him up like he was the next. Toronto well, you know, it's really, you know, what's really interesting about Royce Freeman, in my opinion, is that he is not all that. But he's not. He, but this is the thing: he, is, everybody knows he's not all that, but he's still a, a, a notch up ahead of Gordon overall. I mean, pound for pound. You know, granted, Gordon can he break off some some runs that maybe uh, the other guy can't, but uh, he. Um, Why are you t- paying him top ten running back money for that then? That's where I have an issue with it. He can't block. He can't really he, catch. He, he barely catch. Well. He doesn't catch as well. So again, it just and it, it, it's the cycle of free agent and and drafting and and forcing. I'm the head coach. I'm forcing uh, the issue on offense. The whole idea was we're going to go vertical, you know. So we could go vertical. Oh no, you're not running the ball enough, you know. It's just they run the ball. Well, you're not going vertical. So it's just a nursery rhyme with with Sports Talk Radio STR. So well, if Rippin does play, at least he'll show uh, Gordon how to block. <laughs> show Bull, Bull Eric, Derek, Eric Bull, Garrett Bowles how to block. Matter of fact, Merrillat was, you know. A, you know, in trying to wrap a, a, a nice package in a bow around Elway, is like, see what he did with Bowles? But nobody wants to talk at, at the expense of the whole 
rest of the offensive line. Well, and the whole, the whole side, oh, man. Yes, yes. And you, you, you know, that's not exactly what I wouldn't call a, a, a success story. And uh, it also, um, I think Josie Jewell, the Mer- this was all James Merrillat. He was uh, uh, going about how great Josie, Josie, <laughs> you know, oh, I'm going to oh, get you, you know. The guy that gets pulling off his blocks and can't cover. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, that, that's a success story here. That's how low we've died. You guys are comparing uh, Alexander Johnson to Al Wilson. You remember that? Sports Talk Radio and you feel-gooders? You, you know what? That's a, I have a problem with that. You cannot compare the likes of Alexander Johnson to the greats of Al Wilson or of, uh, uh, R- Randy Gratishar. Don't even get me started with that conversation. No, not dude, even dude, close. Dude, those two, Jewel and Johnson, can't even hold Gratishar's and Al Wilson's jock strap. No. So I don't want to no. hear it. I don't want to hear it. I made the mistake like you did when you called me out saying that they could play in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And I went back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. I went back and, you know, tried to dig up some film back then with Tom Jackson and that. You're right. He, they, 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 wouldn't make, they wouldn't be able to make it. No, I'll no. These guys were, were top tier. These were John Ralston guys. They, 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 these were top tier defenders. I mean, they were top of their class. I mean, there's there was a reason like Tom Jackson like was one of the first sports you know football players who became a sports. I mean, he was you know he was really great. So um, yeah, these were great players, and this that's what I'm saying. We've we've seen bad for so long, we've mistaken it for great, or even yeah. good for that matter. Well, we've taken advantage of the players that were young that we've let go. The likes of Danny Trevathan, the likes of Malik Jackson when they were Don't young. Don't talk about that. Don't talk about that. Don't and talk. <laughs> don't, 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 don't go there. <laughs> the likes of, the likes of, uh, you know what? I think the best lineman we've had over the past couple of years is probably Russell Okun. And we let him go, too. <laughs> but, you know, that was long ago, too. That was in 2016. But a lot of people don't like to remember probably say even Matt Paradis. I mean, you can say all you want about him getting pushed back, but at least he was, at least he, you know, I thought he was a good run blocking center. I don't think he was a great pass blocking center, but I think he was a damn good run blocking center. And then the best right tackle you've ever had was, (laughs) I think the best right tackle you've had was Orlando Franklin. Well, Matt Paradis, what you could have done with him is you could you could have paid him, and I would have lived with it as, and then bring a Cushionberry in, the underling, you know. It was Cochlin in Tennessee. Cochlin, you know, exactly, and then push Cushionberry back to his, you know, learning his bench learning role. Sits in the game film, then he talks to the, to the a veteran. He well, you know, in this situation, you got to do this. This is the technique. This, you know, then it would start making sense to him, you know. Exactly. But but see, the the guy running the show can't see it that way. This is what me and you've been pounding the table all this long, you know, all this time about it. There's no connect. There's it's a just complete disconnect. That I, that. Yep. Go that, ahead. Sorry. That's that style of management is a complete disconnect. And it's a disconnect with the Sandy Cloths of the world, the feel good fans of the world. They. They just keep saying, oh, we'll just get another quarterback, you know. Yeah, or, it's all Drew Locke's fault. It's all his fault. He's the one that is – it's just it, – ladies, it, it's all Drew Locke's fault. It, it's his fault. I mean, <laughs> you can't say – it's all his fault. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to get destroyed uh, Sunday, and Drew Locke will be knocked out of the game. Knocked out of the game. And uh, this this game will be over by the middle of the third quarter. That's that's my prediction. I think yeah, I think you're going to be right on the money with the Drew Lock knocked out. I think you're right on the money with that. Yeah, because I just can't. I mean, I've, I just don't see the schematics. I don't. There's no common sense in play calling uh, schematics. The, the blocking is just so poor. It's on a scale that it's really beyond because it's been going on for so long. Exactly, it's been ignored. The state of the blocking uh, on the offense is it's, it's so bad that it, it, I can't even I don't even have words for it because it's gone on for so long and it's just getting worse and worse. Yes. And you you know I'm done pointing fingers at coaches and players and everything else when the, there's one consistent thread in all this, and it's yep. the guy at the top. 
You know, I just can't imagine that an owner would just keep letting this go on. Well, they would have fired Elway probably after Gary Kubiak left. They they probably would have been like, we got to start over. We got to start over. We we can't, you know, we're not going to, we, you're not going to be the meddling owner slash GM that you want to be. I'm in charge. Okay. I'm going to go get back Adam Peters, which he'll never come back. But that's the guy that I want as general manager after Elway leaves, but it'll never happen. I think, Pat, go ahead. No, go ahead. I think Pat Bowen would have uh, fired Elway right after Vance Joseph, the firing of Vance Joseph. I think that's what have been his his firing when it came right after that. Maybe. I, yeah. I think if Pat Bowen was still the owner, I don't think they would have even looked at Vance Joseph as a head coaching option. Maybe a defensive coordinator position. Well, no, because we've already said, yes, you're right. We've already saw that because he said, no, I want Wade Phillips. So that, yes, yes, that wouldn't. I'm just saying timeline. But then again, you know, I don't think that a healthy Pat Bowen with his sound mind would yes. have allowed the team to dilap- dilapidate around Peyton Manning offensively like they did. Back I, in 2014, end of middle 2014, 2015. A lot of people don't like to bring that up, too. That I they won, I, won, yeah, they won a Super Bowl. They won a Super Bowl because of that defense of Peyton Manning's uh, clutch ability. A lot, you know, they're never going to give Peyton Manning the credit, but he was, you know, he didn't have the arm, but he had the mind. He had, you know, that's the problem with people I have with the whole 2015, the 2015 team is that they didn't give uh, Peyton Manning the credit that he deserves. They are going to give that defense. I'm not saying that that defense is probably top five of the, the past decades I've ever seen because of how the rules have been structured. But you you can't just let go of what Peyton Manning did, helping Brock Osweiler when he was starting, helping this offense to at least be respectable to a point where they scored at least 24 points a game. That's the last time I've seen an offense score 24 points a game in Denver consistently. Yeah, they yeah. won't give him credit because Peyton Manning and Elway at the end of it were beefing. That's why he left. That's why he retired earlier than he should. I think he had one more year left in him, but that's just me. Well, anyway, it was the smart thing to do was to get out of here, just like that guy on the practice squad, basically. Nigel Bradham. Yep. He, he, yeah. He F you to Elway. That tells yeah. you a lot of how Elway is now. Yeah. Yeah. So. It just, uh, this thing, again, it's it's going to come down to ownership. So I think we got a good beat on the uh, the uh, Miami Dolphins. I think it'll be, it's going to be another reoccurring game. It's going to be the same old crap. The only way that uh, I think they could even make this a game, uh, the Broncos, is if they somehow can uh, consistently run the football throughout this game. Or get That'd after the two What's that? Or get after Tua, but I don't see that happening. Well, they haven't gotten after. How I don't know. Well, you guess you could tell me about the Dolphins' offensive line. What? I mean, it's, sure, it's, it's better, better, than, better than it was last year. Okay. Okay. But the field, the, the, con, the field good fans will probably be like, it's the thirtieth ranked offensive line. They're going to play a lot better than you think they do. So go back and watch the film. Well, you know, if this is the thirtieth ranked offensive line, then and the Broncos can't sack a quarterback, then we what can start. Then we can start having the conversation about uh, the uh, this how this uh, defense pressures quarterbacks, yep. and it's not, and that it needs to be retooled. Yep. Okay, so we'll use their own poison against them. We'll do that. Yeah, I mean, if they can get to the quarterback, then that's all the better. But uh, if they can't, well, then we'll have to open that conversation up. Yep. Is there anything else? No, I covered. As much as I could with the Dolphins thing, I, I just I'm a, I'm not I'm not confident in this game at all. I I think this game will be over by the third quarter. I think it's going to be a lot like the first half of the. I think I'm going to compare this game a lot like it was with the first half of the Chargers, and I don't see a second half comeback that that Drew Lock produced. I don't see that happening. I think it's going to be a lot worse than people think it is. Don't overlook this team. This team's a damn good team. Yeah, I see an over uh, conservative offense uh, on this game on this week. May yep. that may keep that may keep Locke in the game a little longer, you know that over conservative. But they're not going to score. You know they're not going to score that many points. Don't you know score unless 10, 6 to 10. Un- unless somehow the Denver Broncos can get a running game going all game all the, throughout the game, not just for one quarter or a spurt here or a spurt there, but not for three plays. Not yeah, 
it has to be throughout the game. Uh, they haven't done that yet. We haven't seen a dominant running game for a, quite a while, so um, especially against top defenses, especially. Yeah. So, is- so we'll 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 see. If we, I'm sure that we we've got it pretty well pegged. We've been we've been pretty close so far. I don't see why we're going to be any different uh, in this game either. But I also just want to say that I'm going to post the links on this video to the uh, game footage of the Raiders uh, that I cut broke down. And I really encourage people to look at the footage that I broke down and come to their own conclusions of where this team is as a whole. It, it, yeah, just go look at the footage. Again, you need to. That's about it for me. All right, that's about it for me too. All right, we'll see the uh, see how the game turns out. Yep. Talk to okay. you guys later. Yep, later. Sure.